Okay, so today we're going to look at um, using a two-sample t-test to answer um, a simple question that um, any wildlife biologist might be uh, posed with. Um, for this question, we're going to go to southwest Washington. Um, here on the, on the screen, you can see an aerial image of, uh, of this part of the state, and there's Mount St. Helens volcano here in the, on the western side of the, the map. And on the eastern side, you can see another volcano, which is uh, Mount Adams. And this big area in between, outlined in orange and labeled here by the 560 Lewis River, is actually a game management unit. Um, the state's divided up into units uh, by the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife um, in order to meet local wildlife management goals. So specifically, the question we're going to look at uh, today revolves around um, looking at harvest data uh, elk harvest data by hunters in the state. So let's just say we've been posed with the question, um, do uh, elk archery hunters take the same number of elk as rifle hunters do in this game management unit? So the first step we need to do, of course, is uh, get some data. And uh, in order to do that, we're going to use this really cool little app called Go Hunt, um, created by WDFNW, that allows you to uh, look at spatial data as well as uh, make queries uh, on hunting data. So here I have my little query box already pulled up. I have the year 2010 species elk harvest um, and the different method types. I have archery um, and the game management unit 560 and I can just press search and I'll get a little box that comes up with my results and here I can see that in 2010 um, there were 68 elk total harvested um, using archery in this unit. Um, to look at rifle, I can look at modern firearm, that's the other uh, name we use for it, and uh, I can search. And shortly here it'll pop up. And so we see that uh, there's a total of 137 elk harvested uh, by rifle hunters in this game management unit in 2010. And I can go back through and uh, look at the past uh, 10 years of data uh, that are available on here. So that's what I've did, and I'm gonna we're gonna write those down, and uh, we'll put those um, into uh, a Google Doc, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so now I've taken um, the harvest statistics data uh, for elk um, from the 560 Lewis River Game Management Unit and entered it into a Google spreadsheet. So you can see here I have the past 10 years for the number of archery uh, kills each year and uh, also I have the same for rifle in this second column. Um, so what a t-test fundamentally does is it compares the, the means of two different uh, samples to see if, if they're statistically different. Um, now there's a couple of assumptions that uh, that need to be met when uh, using a t-test result or t-test uh, to to test for differences between means. And one is that um, is that both of your samples, in this case, the archery samples and the rifle samples, are normally distributed. Um, and there's ways that you can test that, and I'll show those in another video. Um, and also that these need to be uh, independent of each other. Now. You could actually argue that um, since archery hunters get to go out in the field and hunt um, prior to rifle hunters uh, in the fall, it could be that uh, some of the animals that are taken by the archery hunters denies the ability for rifle hunters to take those animals, and so maybe these samples aren't independent. Um, but for now, we're just going to ignore that potential issue and, and move forward with our data. Um, and so what we've we've been tasked with is is asking um, are do archery hunters and rifle hunters take the same number of elk um, in this game management unit? Um, so our null hypothesis, um, sometimes called the no effect or no difference hypothesis, um, is that there's no difference um, in the number of animals killed by archery hunters or rifle hunters. That is, they're they're pretty much the same. Um, our alternative hypothesis is that they're not um, equal. So the alternative hypothesis is sometimes um, called the difference hypothesis um, because you're we're hypothesizing that um, that 
in fact they're not equal and that there there's a there's a difference between the two of them um, so since the uh, two sample t-test looks at comparing the means it might just be useful for us to just look at the means um, in our Google spreadsheet here so you just come down here and click here and uh, press equals and it's just like um, you would do in an Excel and you get the average here and you click and drag and you finish this out and we see we get an average of 83.5 and we should be able to just do and click the same and drag over just as we would in Excel and we see that um, at least it seems on uh, on the surface it's obvious that uh, the mean number of uh, kills by rifle hunters of elk in this game management unit is much higher than that in archery um, but you see in some cases um, the number of uh, kills by archery hunters is the same or relatively equal to rifle hunters. So, you know, we're not totally sure given the variation in the data that these are different, but we're fairly sure. And that's what uh, statistics allows us to do. It allows us to say with some level of conf confidence and uh, some level of probability that uh, that these two uh, two groups or two samples are different from each other. So. Um, what I'm going to do uh, from from this point here is show you uh, ways in which you can do a two sample t-test in three different programs. Um, one of those programs is R, which is readily available and you can download. Um, the other one is Excel, which many uh, many of you have access to. And the final one is a, is a simple statistics program called Minitab. Um, that also allows you to do the same thing. So if you just follow uh, any one of the links that come up on the screen, um, it'll take you to the appropriate uh, software package in which I'll show you how to do a two-sample t-test.